Our next fallacy of relevance is the notorious ad hominem or personal attack. It's one of the few fallacies whose Latin name is better known than the English translation, so I would like you to use the Latin. The ad hominem uses personal invective to vilify an opponent rather than addressing substantive matters in his or her argument. It's a strategy that is so often used in political campaigns that many people have come to think it's acceptable, but it's not. Why is the ad hominem unacceptable? Because personal attacks aimed at undermining an individual's credibility are materially irrelevant to the real issues under discussion. Basically, it's a cheap shot that tries to disparage a person rather than tackling his or her argumentative position. We'll look at three distinct types of ad hominem. First, the abuse of ad hominem, which is a direct attack on a person rather than his or her argumentative position. Here's a quick example. Obama won't represent us. He's a snob who went to Harvard. Next, we'll look at the circumstantial ad hominem, which attacks an arguer through his or her personal states of affairs. In this example, Senator McCain is attacked through his marital circumstances. It's worth noting that circumstantial ad hominems are often used to impute an assumed bias to a person based on his or her circumstances. Finally, we'll look at the tu quoque, or you too fallacy. Here's Bernie Madoff trying to deflect the accusation, accusation that he's a fraud by claiming his clients are just like him. Essentially, he's arguing that he can't be accused by people who are engaged in similar practices. We begin with the abusive ad hominem, which is a personal attack on the arguer's race, ethnicity, gender, education, age, sexual orientation, or other personal attribute. Look at these examples. I can't see supporting Hillary Clinton's foreign policy strategies. Women don't have the emotional stability to be Secretary of State. Here's a second example. What? Believe Obama? Come on, he's black, right? How can you possibly trust him? Both of these examples rely on personal abuse to challenge an argumentative position. This is very important to note because an ad hominem is not just a case of name calling. The ad hominem always takes place in the context of a background argument that's being considered. In the first example, the implied conclusion is that Hillary Clinton's foreign policies are worthy of support. In the second case, the implied conclusion is that Obama is believable. So it's not just a case of derisive taunting, it's irrelevant reasoning, and that's our whole concern in this learning module. Here's another abuse of ad hominem, one that attacks an arguer's sexual orientation as well as his or her beliefs regarding God. Again, this is not just name calling. The implication is that if someone is a gay atheist, he or she will threaten Christian family values. This concludes this segment of a multi-part lecture on fallacies of relevance. Please proceed to the next segment.